Again, I said in, seven, in uh, 50, 58, we were six. 73, uh, UK, Denmark, and Ireland came on board. And four enlargement after, or the fifth enlargement, the fifth enlargement after in 2013 with Croatia, 28 member states has become part of the, of the European Union. Through a system of uh, acquiring uh, the EU law, the so-called ACI, ACI communautaire, so basically embarking their own internal system, uh, our legislation, and you see how, it, how a transformative power has the EU, because to be part of the European Union, you have to share uh, uh, their own legislation based on a set, again, of values, of interests, we are, we are common. So it's not a lip service when you enter the European Union. You might sign a paper, you think I'm part of the club. No, you, have, you should have your own legislation based on the EU legislation. And uh, maybe a member of the parliament knows, but uh, around 60 or 70 percent of the domestic legislation in each of the European member states is agreed all together in Brussels. So you might realize how much, I wouldn't say intrusive, but how much is, is very, very deep the way Europe enter into uh, the life of, uh, of uh, each uh, member state. And how transformative it is. I made an example. Look, for example, of Poland and Ukraine, two countries uh, that uh, um, maybe give you a an, an plastic idea of what the EU represent. Uh, if you look at the GDP in 1990 of uh, Ukraine and Poland, uh, the GDP uh, the per, capita, per capita GDP was, was the same and, uh, and the GDP of Ukraine was a little bit bigger also because the country was a little bit bigger. But basically the starting point was not very much different from an economic point of view. You go quick forward, you write to 2014, you see that Poland has three times the GDP per capita of, uh, of Ukraine. Maybe GDP is not uh, necessarily and, uh, the, the best uh, uh, element to compare. But if you look from a space of prosperity, you see that Poland anchored into the EU system, part of a rural law system, ben it has been beneficial of an important amount of structural fund, fund by, by, by all the member states. So Poland is a vibrant economy growing 4-5% per year. Ukraine has a different dynamic. Um, but just to give you the example of where being in the European Union can bring you uh, in the space of a quarter of, uh, uh, of centuries. Certainly this uh, uh, idyllic uh, image that you might have uh, uh, of, uh, of Europe uh, seems to be uh, suspended in the air. You know, certainly this is not the case. Uh, the uh, global financial crisis which transformed for ourselves in the Eurozone crisis uh, as, uh, as they had a uh, dramatic impact on how the Europe has been, uh, has been working. Uh, but most of all, the members say realize how 50 years of European Union not only has created an enormous space for democracy and prosperity, but also created an important element of interdependence among member states, especially those who were sharing uh, the common, the common uh, currency. But uh, the project has been on the verge of, of a collapse uh, but I think, again, the European found uh, the, the right response with a mix of uh, uh, responsibility, so do your own work, reform your economy, uh, coupled with uh, uh, a good sense of solidarity. it has been uh, an important transfer of uh, resources from member state to the country. So between this mix of responsibility and, uh, and uh, solidarity, I think we overcome the crisis, the Eurozone is there, you can buy uh, my salary still on Euro, uh, no one has left uh, the Eurozone, no one has been forced to, and the economy is back on track. Certainly it's not the pace, the speed that we would have hoped for, but certainly economy in the Europe is, uh, uh, is, is back. And if you look at the program of the new commission, uh, who has already one year, is already one year old, the, the Juncker one commission, uh, there's a sense of urgency in engaging in new, in new, new policies where the EU will be a, dri where a driver uh, for change. So there will be, if you look at the 10 points of the Juncker Commission, will be uh, more competition, more uh, internal markets, uh, more trade, uh, energy union, more climate change, FTA, policy on, on migration. So again, Europe is not certainly 
trying to remain uh, stand still, but trying to improve and, and going forward. So this was a, a, a brief uh, sketch of what I believe has been uh, the AU as a driver of a change for e internal dimension. If you look for the external dimension, um, the set of values of uh, philosophy remain mu very much uh, uh, the same. Uh, again, for us, uh, uh, democracy, human right, um, rule of law, uh, is, is, is critical to work in a world, in a very complex world. And our objective is always to, uh, to, to, to live in a rule-based international system. That's why we work in Brussels. We are a microcosm of the world, where 28 countries find every day their, <coughs> their landing point, their consensus. And we expect to, uh, to have the same approach uh, when we work with our uh, international, uh, international partners. And we bring to the international role some, some important element of our toolbox. We, again, we are the first economy, the first uh, trading bloc. Through the years, we have developed a common security and defense policy. We have an external action uh, services. Um, we have a comprehensive approach uh, to try to solve the uh, crisis. So the EU is bringing all this to act as, an, uh, as an, uh, um, a global actor in a, in a multilateral, uh, multilateral world. Maybe I remain, I, I'm a little bit still vague. I'll give, I give you some example. For example, in security. Certainly Europe is not, is not a hard power. Security is a soft power, and I think a soft doesn't mean weak. Soft means that we believe that uh, a political, a diplomatic solution is the one who bring uh, a lasting, uh, lasting solution. If, some example, Iran. Uh, Iran, uh, in the uh, 14 July this year, has been signed a an, uh, an landmark agreement between the six, uh, the so-called six world powers and the European Union with, with Iran. Basically, is uh, uh, the solution, the political and diplomatic solution to, uh, to, um, to address the, nuclear, the Iranian nuclear, nuclear program. The EU bring on board two elements. The first one is, is economic weight. Uh, Iran has been brought back to the, nego to the negotiating uh, table when basically the EU imposed the oil embargo. The US has very little economic relation with Iran since 1979. Russia a little bit less. China emerging. And certainly the bulk of the work has been made by, by the European. Uh, and this one has been a changing, a changing element. Again, it's not hard power. We didn't bomb anybody, but we, we imposed an oil embargo. We put an economy on the knee. But it again was not an, uh, an instrument, was not an objective in itself, was an instrument to bring Iran back to the negotiating table. Certainly, we have worked with the, with the US, with the Chinese, with the Russian, and the others. But at the end, the agreement which was struck in July is an agreement that has been endorsed by the international community that allows us to keep a track of what uh, Iran will, uh, will do. 